Hi, hello, and welcome to the first of my interface in Critical Diary vlogs. My name's John Garrett, and the subject of this vlog is intermediality. The process that I will be following is as follows. I will first address the reading for this particular subject, including the specification from the module guide and any quotes that I've highlighted from the primary reading. Next I will discuss the reading and its examples and how I interpreted them. And finally I will highlight some of my cohort's examples and examine my example and its overlaps and connections. So to the reading, what is intermediality? The following quote hopefully ex explains. Intermediality is about 10% music, 25% architecture, 12% drawing, 18% shoemaking, 30% painting and 5% smell. This is from the primary reading for this week. It is Jill Bennett's article, The Aesthetics of Intermediality. Bennett also said that intermediality is operating at the intersection of different discourses, practices and aesthetics. These images constitute an intermedial space through which ways of seeing and new terms of analysis can emerge. I think a good single word analysis for intermediality is betweenness. So after thoroughly reading and absorbing Jill Bennett's article, I was particularly struck by the work of Gabriel Orozoco and the examples given in his series of pieces called Atomists. The following is a list of references from Bennett and they are referring to Orozoko's work and these have enabled me to come up with an example of my own on the, of, around intermediality. So some of the quotes are elaboration of, uh, in, elaboration of found material, over, overlaying one form of media with another, framing details such as gesture and points of contact, facial expressions, corporeal actions, the actions of the body, um, and just one final observation from the right from the reading um, is that the artwork that you'll see in a minute is is that it's been produced by the artist and it seems intentionally to have been executed in a quite a crude fashion almost childlike when you look at it up close so here is an example of Orozoko's series atomists it uses found photographs of sportsmen in particular with collaged overpainting uh, of the images they are often presented with the original captions underneath which adds to the understanding of, um, of the multitude of elements being expressed here, particularly when there is a detailed description of the action before and after the shot is taken. So turning to my, my cohort and their examples that they brought um, to, the, to, the joint, to the group, um, there was Robin Eli's binary project, which is basically about um, people all over the world buying parts of a of a painting that uh, Eli Eli had uh, painted. Uh, there's Sh Shinhara's Sh Shitatsu's. I've probably pronounced that wrong. Sorry, uh, the key in hand, which was um, thousands of found keys hanging by red strings in a gallery space over a boat, which was quite an interesting um, juxtaposition. Um, both Paul. Kindersley and Cindy Sherman um, make the photograph uh, photographs. They're photographers, but they make um, kind of reality modelling or hyper real for photographs. Um, the Seal Floyer's welcome mat is a welcome mat that's positioned at the exit of an art gallery, and so there's quite some um, quite upside down or you know um, inverse connotations to that, um, and. Finally, Chicks on Speed or We Don't Play Guitars is a feminist protest uh, pop song, which was interesting. The, the video was quite uh, graphic in terms of colours and shapes and things. So, 
another interesting example. So turning to my um, particular um, example, after considering the Bennett paper and the Orizoko images and the notes I'd taken, I was reminded of an artist that I'd seen on the BBC show later with Jules Holland. The artist is Benjamin Clementine and the track that I heard was called Aliens. Unfortunately, due to the restrictions of copyright, I could not upload the video of Benjamin Clementine to this vlog. However, for these four images are illustrative of the points I would like to make. <coughs> the first shows 3D elements of Clementine's work using a mannequin of a pregnant woman in, in the performance, possibly a symbolic of Mother Earth. Secondly, the draping of the US flag around the mannequin represents America, I think, um, as a haven for people who are coming from maybe war-torn countries who are fearful for their lives. But this might be a historical haven, because I think there's uh, more to it, certainly for the present day. And thirdly, the gesturing of connect and connectivity of the mannequin by walking with it, her in an embrace. There's one there where he's got his arm around her as he, and he walks around with her. And lastly, um, hiding behind her when he's singing the chorus, and then the chorus alludes to the demise of the alien in a foreign world. There's a lot of symbolism going on there. Now, Clementine was also is is sees himself as a playwright, uh, a storyteller, a novelist, um, a poet, and obviously a singer-songwriter. But you know, there's choreography in there. There's there's a multitude of of layers. And so finally, after looking at my, the, my cohort um, examples and mine, um, I started to scribble this mind map down. And I, finally, I, I came to the conclusion that, I, that Benjamin Clarentine's position in the contemporary art world, and I could see the connections to people like Yoko Ono, Peter Kennard, Adam Curtis and Rachel Whiteread. Thank you for listening.